we're up and running again. Sorry it took so long. Hope you guys can still join us. Uh, had to change locations. Had to empty out some storage on my phone. Apparently, I'd filled the phone completely up with fish pictures. <laughs> Not a bad thing, I guess, but it caused a problem tonight. But, uh, hey, if you guys are here again, let me know. Leave me some comments so I can see y'all are here. And we'll start doing a little top five baits on a Wednesday night. Like I was trying to tell you guys earlier, uh, been running late days on the water and just have not got the Guides Network episode done for this week. So that will be up tomorrow. So you get a live stream, top five baits on Wednesday night this week, and you'll get Guides Network on Thursday night. So be sure you're watching for that because it's going to be a good one. I just actually finished up filming it a couple hours ago. So uh, there we go. <laughs> Left a John B video to watch this. That's what I like to see. So hey, we're back. We're back in fine fashion. I got the comments working. We are all operational. What is up? There's old Dave with Get a Witness. What's going on, big fellas? I see you there, Mojo. Appreciate you, buddy. Going fishing this weekend. What should you focus on to throw? Okay. So my top five baits for this week. Obviously, don't have all the baits. Uh, don't have all the baits with me or whatever. But uh. I had to come in the house close right by the routers like right over there to get this thing to work but uh so for my top five baits this week i'll just go over them real quick man i'm using a lot of spoons i'm using the jumbo joe flutter spoon the biggest flutter spoon that joe makes um i'm using a jigging spoon that he makes now i've actually switched to joe spates's jigging spoon I, I fell in love with it and it is out catching the war eagles and any other jigging spoon Two to one, three to one. I mean, it's just really wearing them out. Um, and then as a third spoon alternate, I'm using a smaller Joe Space flutter spoon. On the days when it gets a little tougher and we can't buy a flutter spoon bite, we'll go to a smaller flutter spoon, and it's getting a few bites. On top of that, Alabama rig, guys. Alabama rig with a Smash Tech, Smash Tail Jr., catching a lot of fish right now, a lot of numbers. I haven't caught a lot of big fish on it at all. All my big fish are coming on the big spoons, but... It is catching a lot of numbers. So if you go across, you know, if you're looking on your electronics and you see some fish and you think there's a big school there, but maybe they're not that big a fish, throw that out of bed, Marie. It'll catch them. And then uh, for the fifth one, oh, yeah, Carolina Rig is also getting a lot of bites out deep, too. Again, not catching a lot of big fish on it, but we're catching a lot of numbers on Carolina Rig. Somebody's crying. I don't know why he's crying. Somebody's telling me to put my money where my mouth is. I don't even know what that is, what that means, Nathan. Like you, yep. Road beds and pond dams are exactly what I'm focused on. That's where I'm throwing all that stuff. You notice, I actually don't have any shallow water baits in the top five baits this week, so that's kind of rare. So if you guys have questions, be sure and drop them in. I know this is kind of a haphazard live stream. There we go. Somebody loves the top five baits live streams. We appreciate it. All right. So I'm all caught up. So like I said, if you guys got questions, let me know. We'll answer as many as we can. Uh, hey, we've got, so it's going to be a full week on the channel. Uh, we got live stream tonight. We got a, um, okay, excuse me. I'm a little distracted trying to read comments while I talk got a live stream tonight we've got the guys network episode tomorrow on thursday night friday night we'll have a live stream from the lake fork tackle store from our free seminars so if you guys are in the area come see us up there at the uh, lft store there in emory texas at 6 p.m on friday night we'll be doing another free seminar there got a couple guys saying they love the hoodie shirt the new shirts which is somewhere under here there it is we appreciate that, man. I'm glad you guys like it. I was really happy with them, too. I've been wearing them literally every day. I've worn them every day since I've got them. Uh, love them. Dirty water, one to two feet. What is, I'm getting so many questions. Oh, how do I approach dirty water with one to two feet of visibility? Uh, in dirty water with one to two feet of visibility, I really like the Six Sense Movement ADX is maybe my favorite bait in dirty water. It bounces off trees, it makes a lot of noise, it makes a lot of water movement, a lot of vibration, and that deflection causes a reaction. 
and gets their attention and helps them when they can't see very far, helps them be able to feel that bait because it shakes so violently. Um, somebody else asked, are they biting a wacky rear trickworm? Yeah, you can catch fish on a wacky rear trickworm, shallow, absolutely. There's plenty of grass fish and wacky trickworms, one of the best ways to go about doing it. But for me, the deep fishing, you know, we've been catching all our big fish out deep, so that's what I've been doing. I know there's still some big ones up shallow. It's just when that deep bites on and the lake's not real crowded and I can get out there and kind of have some of those deep spots to myself, I, I love to do that as well, so. All right, somebody says, just bought a few of the Smash Tech hollow body swim baits. What size hook should I be throwing them on? Four-aught or five-aught belly-weighted hook is good. Either one's fine. Um, I like to go five-aught just to get that hook a little further back in the bait. But if you go four-aught, it does have a little more wiggle to it. So it depends on your preference there. But four-aught or five-aught's good. <laughs> Ovo Cash TV is giving away three iPhones. I think that is probably bull. <laughs> good looking out there, Mojo. Yeah, boy. <laughs> hollow body swim baits, eh? <laughs> nice. Yeah, those dude, those hollow bodies from Smash Tech are they're deadly. All right, JD Sports. B Law, what should I fish on the pond dams tomorrow? And did you say I should throw a rig on the road bed? Gonna throw a football head on road beds. Uh, the football head bite has kind of died off for me. Well, the, I'm using the Devon jig from Six Sense, but yeah, my, my deep jig bite has kind of faded a little bit. Um, but for you, man, if you're fishing a tournament and you're trying to catch unders, Alabama rig, Carolina rig is going to get your limit. And then that big spoon is what can catch you in over. I mean, a big spoon, it's not getting just a ton of bites. We're not catching a ton of fish. It's not big number days, but we're catching some really big fish on those big spoons. So... There you go on that. Who else has got one? Boy, this is going quick. When I don't have my couch to sit on, I get tired easy. Boy, I'm getting old. I've been on my feet all day fishing. Now I'm <laughs> too tired to stand up and talk. <laughs> Any more questions? You guys drop a couple more in if you got them. What do I recommend while fishing a rock quarry? I've never fished a rock quarry. <laughs> I don't know, man. Probably... Uh, if it has really steep bluff walls and stuff, drop shots can be good, but finesse jigs can be really good on bluff walls this time of year. You know, it's starting to get cold, and the colder it gets, the better that deal will, go, will be. So uh, try to maybe think about throwing a really light jig that will fall real slow down those bluff walls. Supposedly that works really well. That's what I've heard. I wouldn't know. I've never done it. What's a barfish? A barfish is a yellow bass. It is a cousin to the white bass. It's about the size of your hand. Is what most grown barfish are about the size of your hand. Um, and this time of year, those big bass, they really love, love to eat those yellow bass. Now, somebody also asked what size spoon am I throwing? I'm throwing a six inch spoon. Well, a six inch spoon really mimics the size and profile of a barfish down there kicking around on the bottom chasing shad or whatever so there you go casting spoon and stroking it my retrieval on the spoon actually tomorrow's guides network is all about big flutter spoons so i know you need this information for tomorrow but if, <laughs> if you saw that it would it would help you uh but i am actually just i'm, I'm stroking it but i'm not violently like i'm not snapping it up i'm just kind of pretty smooth just Pulling it up, sw basically swimming it up and letting it fall. I swim it up and then I drop my rod and follow my slack back down as it falls, making sure that I'm watching the line like a hawk because they're going to bite it on the fall most of the time. <clears throat> Can bass be on beds right now? Uh, on Lake Fork, they actually, we did have a few that spawned in the last month or so, but that's done now. I haven't seen any signs of that in quite some time now. Uh, have I been on a good topwater bite? There is a good topwater bite at the very end of the day, most days. Now, if it's really windy, which we've had a lot of that, if it's a post frontal day, we've had you know quite a bit of that. Some of that's calmed down. We haven't had as much. But you get a good calm evening 
on a little bit of a warmer day and you can absolutely smoke them on top waters right before dark. Biggest recommendation for a beginning tournament angler. Pay attention to details. Details that right now, you don't even know those details exist. I can literally, <laughs> and I've, I've <laughs> figured this out about myself through guiding uh, the last couple of years, but I can literally not even be looking and just hear a fish hit the top of the water or hear a fish splash and most of the time know exactly what species of fish it was. You got to pay attention to details. All those little tiny details, things like that, uh, when you hear something, what type of fish was it, where was he, uh, wind change, of, change of wind direction, change of wind velocity, change of water color, uh, change in the health of grass, all those little details. Pay attention to every little tiny detail and really focus on what happened when you had success and what happened when you didn't have success and then analyze that after your day is over. I would suggest even making notes at the end of the day. I used to do that all the time when I was really learning how to fish uh, seriously, when I was taking it real serious as a grown, as once I was an adult, I would actually make notes of every trip when I got home, how I caught them, when I caught them, what were the conditions, all that stuff. So someday I'm going to have to find that book and show you guys that on camera. It was pretty cool, man. I took a notebook and I made all kinds of notes. If I can find that thing, that'd be awesome. Somebody says they've been killing them on a gold black red eye shad on Pickwick. Yep. Man, those, those like gold chrome colors with a black back, are, I love those colors on lipless baits. What's the shallowest water I'll throw the flutter spoon? Right now, I'm throwing the flutter spoon right around 20 feet. Today, it was 18, it was 20 feet to 18 feet, or 18 feet to 20 feet. Um, it's been as shallow as 15, but it's been as deep as like 22 or 23, but usually between 15 and 20 is where it's been most days the last month or so. Oh, yeah, a deep water shaky head could definitely do some damage. I mean, Carolina rigs are catching baits. You know, typically we do throw a lot of shaky heads in the fall this time of year. I just haven't done it, been catching fish other ways. The pattern hasn't taken me there, so to speak. But uh, I've had a lot of years on, on fork in the fall where I've caught a ton of fish on some type of a, some variation of a straight-tailed worm uh, on a shaky head, so... Hey, that's the other thing about the Carolina rig that's working right now. We're throwing straight tail stuff on it. We're not throwing the creature baits. I love to throw a baby brush hog, but right now on Carolina rigs, I'm throwing ring fries and hyper sticks. Uh, that's, that's what's working better is a straight tail bait. So. Have I ever fished Mineral Wells? Mineral Wells Street Park, west of Fort Worth. Nope, I've never fished that. It's a beautiful area out there, though. All right. We got some questions answered. Anybody got any more questions before we start wrapping this thing up? Still got a few minutes. I'll be happy to answer as many as we can. What boat do I have? I have a Skeeter ZX225. How would you minimize what you have tied on when you begin the day fishing? Sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I hate retying during the middle of the day. Sometimes I'll have 10 or 12 rods out, uh, even when I know I'm not going to use half of them. I'm, not, I'm the worst guy to ask about that because I'm bad about doing that. Nathan Leahy is dumping some money in the Super Chat. So if you guys don't know, Super Chat is a thing where you guys can actually donate money to my channel. And all the dollars that come from the YouTube channel go back into the YouTube channel for uh, travel expenses, camera equipment, uh, use whatever I need to produce all these videos for you. Everything that you guys help contribute, whether it's by watching and the ad revenue I get, or whether it's by the super chat, like Nathan Leahy is donating five dollars, and I think he's done it three or four times tonight. So thank you, Nathan Leahy, you're the man. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. But uh, everything that you guys put in there is going to go right back into the channel. So whatever you put in, you'll see in return. I've never kayak fished, but I used to fish out of an eight-foot uh, Pelican plastic boat. How many fat guys can you fit on that boat of yours? Well, get a witness. I know that me and you and Jeremy, I was the smallest one, and I'm pretty fat myself. So <laughs> we got at least three. We're good with at least three.
Am I catching them every now and then while flipping? I haven't been doing any flipping this week. But the flipping jig bite should be coming on like really soon. Somebody's talking about a Skeeter limited edition. Yeah, that thing's pretty nasty. Somebody says they like the new FX21 Skeeter. Yes, the FX21 Skeeters are awesome. What boat am I buying? Well, it's going to be a Skeeter. I don't know which model yet. I'll have to figure that out when that day comes. Um, it'll be a 20-footer. I think I'm going back to FX on this one, but I'm not 100% on that yet. There's going to be a boat deal involved on this one, so I'm going to have to find out as I go along here. Can I explain? <laughs> Alan Soul Cruz, that's my old rig. Alan Soul Cruz says, Palm Prowler, 8 foot, 40 pound thrust, be jealous, boys. That is the exact rig that I used to float around when I first started fishing Lake Fork. And uh, actually, to this day, my biggest bag I've ever caught came out of that stupid 8 foot plastic boat. Can I explain the knot that I tied on the beginner video? So on that knot called the Homer Circle Knot, you go through the eye of the hook or your split ring, whatever you're tying onto, you tie an overhand knot around your main line. You then wrap three times up your main line, three times down your main line. You take your tag in, go back through the overhand knot, cinch all three angles. That's how we do it. Favorite bait for suspended fish? Right now, it would be Alabama rig, 100%. Uh, when they suspend a little higher uh, later in winter, in the winter time, when it gets really cold, January, well, it's never really cold in Texas, but relatively really cold, and you have a warm day, the shad will rise and the bass will rise with them, and then a suspending jerk bait that'll get about six foot down can be a absolute killer. Advantage over polymer knot. So that knot, I prefer over the polymer knot for fluorocarbon because a polymer knot, fluorocarbon tends to cinch down and cut itself on a polymer knot. I've never had that issue where the line actually cut itself on that homer circle knot, and it's super strong. <laughs> Somebody says, boat deal, damn, I need a YouTube channel. It's a little more than a YouTube channel for me to get that boat deal, but I appreciate what you're saying. Do you think it's worth it to convert a John boat to a little bass boat or just save up for inexpensive bass boat? Man, you got to go with what you got, bro. I mean, you could do a conversion fairly cheaply. Uh, just add in a, a, a really take you an old beat up ice chest. You probably find one in a dump somewhere and put an aerator in it and a, and a little bilge pump you can buy from Walmart or Academy or wherever. And now you've got a live well. You could take plywood, paint it, weather treat it. Screw that into your your uh, your bench seats there on the front of the John boat. Now you got a front deck, and basically you've got a mini bass boat. So you could do that really cheap for next to nothing. So, man, yeah, it's worth it. Favorite knot for braid? That's coming up on our bass tips for beginners in sixty seconds. Uh, but it's a Palomar. I, I use Palomar on braid. 20 foot legends stop by little candy tomorrow and see me somebody says we fished fork sunday through tuesday with poor luck on fork but thanks to your video on lake monticello caught a new pb of eight pounds and four ounces that's what i like to hear y'all see that smile on my face i love it when you guys when these videos help so Man, thanks for letting us know that, and congratulations to you, eight pounds, four ounce. That is an absolute hoss. Good on you. Good job. Uh, what you, if you don't mind telling us if, did you, if you if you caught it on a smash tech swim bait? That's what I want to know. Other than that, you can keep it to yourself. I understand. But if you caught it on a smash tech big swim bait, I would love to know. I know I missed some up here because you guys were throwing them in here pretty quick. Mojo won't finish his homework. Joseph Leahy, you finish your homework, boy, right now. <laughs> somebody's asking about starting guiding i must have missed it i missed some earlier 
because of how fast they were coming in. Somebody's wanting me to do a video on how to start guiding. Man, that is such a long conversation and such a hard thing to do to get started in the guide business. And you can't do it without somebody helping you. I can tell you that. Uh, Andrew Grills got me started. He had some people that got him started. Everybody I know had somebody that took them under their wing and got them going. Uh, but there's a lot more to it than that. I mean, you gotta you gotta have really good equipment. You gotta take a take a risk and buy some really expensive equipment. You got to be pretty good at fishing. <laughs> that helps. Um, you gotta be able to catch fish consistently in all weather conditions, no matter what happens. Um, and you've got to be extremely patient and good with people. You have to be a person that gets along with just about everybody you meet. You have to be very patient with people because I love all my guide customers, but I promise you there are a lot of them that test your patience, and it's not their fault. They just don't know. They're not experienced on the water maybe or whatever may have you. Uh, there's just all kinds of things. You know, everybody's a little different, and you got to cater to each and every one of them, so you got to adjust you got to make your game plan for the fish fit their game plan for how they're going to have their day. So it's uh, it's tough to get started in the guide business. It's even more tough to stay in the guide business. It is a very, very difficult profession. But if you love fishing more than anything in the world and you never, ever get tired of bass fishing, it can be one of the most rewarding professions. It is for me. So somebody, this is a good question. Okay, so the guy from Monticello says he did not catch it on the convict, but his father missed a PB that came off at the side of the boat, seven pound plus on the convict. Beautiful. <clears throat> the Smash Tech line through shad is the real deal. It is the real deal. I will tell you it's a very soft bait. It has to be a very soft bait to have the action it has and the size of bait that it is. So you can't go whipping it around like it's a daggum spinner bait. There's been some people that complain about the bait tearing up. Well, you just have to treat the bait. You have to lob it. You have to lob cast it. If you go whipping it around, it's going to tear. But that line through shad, that gizzard shad is for real. Somebody says, hey, if you have to catch a fish on the Smash Tech Convict, would you just fish it? Wait until you find the fish. How long will you fish it only? <clears throat> so I'm going to tell you something about big swim baits. There is only one way to figure out a big swim bait bite. Commit to it. Put it in your hands and don't throw nothing else. If you have time to recreational fish over, this, over the winter, where it doesn't matter if you zero. It's not going to cost you money in a tournament. Uh, you don't have to catch them that day. Uh, you're just going out for fun fishing and you want to learn a big swim bait. Wintertime's a good time to do it. We catch a lot of fish on big swim baits in wintertime. You've got to put those big swim baits in your hand and leave them. You just got to commit to it and figure out that bite. Then once you figure out the rhythm, the speed, the cadence that will get you bites on that, you will get more bites. It took me a long time too. I probably fished a glide bait for... I started... I didn't fish a glide bait. I, I was already guiding, so I was fishing all the time. And I probably fished a glide bait for six months before I figured out how to catch fish on it. I would have customers get them on a pattern that was catching fish, and then I'd pick that glide bait up. And I just played with it and messed with it and jacked with it until I figured it out. Alan Socrew says he's ready for trip number two. Hey, I'm ready for you, buddy. Just give me a call. Let me know when y'all when y'all want to do it. Well, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. That's a good amount of questions. I appreciate you guys keeping the live stream going, keeping the questions coming in. Nathan Leahy is the MVP of tonight with all the Super Chat donations. We appreciate that, big dog. And uh, if any of you guys are wanting to book some winter trips, I have some openings in December. Uh, I have a lot of stuff open for February and January, particularly the second half of January, and that's when it starts getting really good for big, giant bass. We catch a lot of big bass in. You get right day, the warming trend day. It can be some of the most phenomenal fishing you'll ever see. So, um, 
Thank you very much, uh, Willie, Willie uh, J. Allen. Willie J. Allen Jr., thank you very much for that comment, buddy. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm glad I can help any way I can. So that's what it's all about, guys. You know, helping each other catch more fish, loving our fellow man. Y'all know what we say. That's what we do, right? So we're going to keep on doing that. We're going to keep on pumping out the videos. Like I said, we got the next two days consecutive. We'll have content coming out on the channel, so stay tuned for that. And other than that, I guess I just appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time right here on your Lake Fork Guide.